All right, folks, in this uh, video, we'll be looking at how we classify igneous rocks, right? So first of all, we classify igneous rocks uh, based on kind of two criteria. First of all, their texture, uh, and second of all, their mineral composition, right? So texture, when we're talking about that, we're talking about the size, the shape, and the arrangements of the mineral constituents uh, in that rock or, or the lack thereof, right? So what factors control texture? The number one uh, factor is, is, of course, the rate at which the magma cools, right? Deep underground, intrusive, millions of years to cool, right? Solid crystals form. Uh, extrusive igneous rock, lava, right? Cools very quickly on the surface of the earth. Uh, whatever crystals are there are there, but uh, the rest of it doesn't have time to form, and we get matrix or, or volcanic glass, right? Uh, it also uh, depends on the amount of silica present. Pre silica can affect the composition, uh, but also the texture of something, right? Uh, another factor is the amount of dissolved gases in the magma. Dissolved gases are important for initiating a, a volcanic eruption, but, uh, you know, uh, if, you, if you have, uh, you know, a nice uh, lava with lots of bubbles that have uh, formed like this, right, and it's very viscous or, or flowy, right, you can get the, the, the bubbles escaping. Right? So let's look at these different textures, right? Again, cooling rate has the greatest control on texture. Here we see uh, a piece of granite, right? And this has, uh, again, we see some darker minerals in here, like maybe some biotite or something, but uh, we see lots of lighter colored pinks and whites, right? So this is our non-ferromagnesian or felsic, right, type of lava, right? This is granite, right? And we can see this thing is solid crystals. If you were to take it and shine it at yourself, it'd be all kind of shiny, all of solid crystals. They may not... You know, they may look kind of amorphous, but they'll all be, you know, solid crystal, right? Now, here's a piece of what looks like maybe rhyolite or andesite. And this is what we call a fast cooling texture, right? So this one cooled on the, or near the surface of the earth as a lava, right? Uh, and those crystals didn't have time to form. So we get a lot of ground mass. These look kind of dull and boring, right? Very, very fast cooling. We get just solid volcanic glass, stuff we know as obsidian. So those types of igneous textures, right? The very fine grained, fast cooling one, that texture is called aphanitic, right? Fine grained. The magma uh, solidifies at or close to the surface as lava, right? Crystals too small to be identified with the naked eye in most chances, or most cases, right? Phaneritic texture. Now, this is our coarse-grained intrusive texture, right? This is our extrusive texture. This is an intrusive texture. Solid crystals. You can see it's all kind of shiny and exciting, right? Uh, then there's, there's solid interlocking mass of coarse-grained crystals, right? So phaneritic, coarse-grained, intrusive, slow cooling, right? And then we have another one that's called porphyritic, right? Which shows two stages of cooling, right? Usually slow, then fast, right? So here we have uh, an extrusive igneous rock. This is uh, an andesite with a porphyries in it, right? So these are our little porphyries. These are the crystals, right, of plagioclase, I think, that were growing at the time, happily in the magma chamber, and then the volcano burped, you know, all this up came up as lava, and, you know, the, the rest of the, the, the liquid froze around it as volcanic glass, right? Here, these are also uh, phenocrysts, right, just these larger minerals, right? But generally, when we're talking phenocrysts, and especially in this class, we're going to be talking about extrusive, right, phenocrysts or porphyritic texture. Again, glassy texture, this is going to be our super fast cooling, right? Uh, basically out of a volcano into an ocean, something like that, right? Uh, we're talking uh, just frozen elements in space and time. This is pure volcanic glass, right? And then we have a couple other textures. We have a pyroclastic texture. Pyro means fire, clastic rock, so literally fire rock, right? These are the, the uh, remains of strong explosions and... and uh, um, um, uh, Lahar, not Lahars, but uh, um, pyroclastic flows, uh, ash columns, that kind of stuff, right? Uh, and those are very uh, 
you can see a lot of vesicles and holes and, and you know, sometimes a, even fragmental texture, right? Not quite as violent here as a vesicular texture, right? This is where the gases trapped in this magma uh, are released a lot slower, right? And have time to kind of bubble out and leave kind of remains of where they bubbled out. Right. So let's look at where those igneous rocks form, right? So slow cooling at depth, right? We're going to have in the magma chamber, right? Or, um, or uh, deep, you know, in, in the earth, we have that slow cooling, uh, coarse to medium grain, we're going to have those intrusive igneous rocks, right? Uh, but once we start to get in to the volcanic neck, right, we have, um, now we're in kind of in contact with the surface environment, the gases are able to nucleate and drive an eruption, right? Now we have lava basically kind of from there, right? Uh, so that's where we get rapid cooling, right? So um, we see, you know, these pyroclasts up here, welded, non-welded, right? Uh, eruption of lava, right? And then also uh, here's, you know, kind of in the magma chamber happily growing are these crystals, then they get erupted out the volcano and that gives our porphyritic texture. So, we just kind of looked at the textures of igneous rock, but we also uh, based the classification uh, on mineral composition, right? So again, 98% of the weight of our crust, those eight most common minerals, silicon, oxygen, and aluminum, blah, 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 right? We've been over them before. We know them, we love them, right? Uh, magma cools, crystallizes, forming those ferromagnesian and non-ferromagnesian silicates, right? Or, or mafic and felsic silicates, right? Again, those ferromagnesian minerals are going to be low in silica relatively, right? Uh, and they're going to be the ox, olivine, peroxines, amphiboles, biotites are non-ferromagnesian minerals, higher in silica, quartz being all silicon oxygen bonds, right? Plagiocase, potassium feldspar, and the muscovite micas, right? So basically, we, we kind of talked about uh, in the last chapter how a lot of these non-ferromagnesian minerals are light in color, light in density, and these, these ferromagnesian minerals are dark in color, dark in density, right? So kind of looking at, at the rock as a whole, we can, you know, essentially kind of eyeball and look at the rock and look at kind of the proportions of these light versus these dark minerals and decide, you know, kind of where, uh, where the chemistry is kind of based on that, right? So again, felsic, this applies to these non-ferromagnesian rich or non-ferromagnesian style rocks, right? Like this granite here. Uh, this felsic, again, lots of silica by weight, more non-ferromagnesian minerals, right? Less dense, right? Lighter in color, right? Whereas on the other hand, we have this gabbro here. Those are both intrusive igneous rocks, um, but this, you know, much less silica by weight, a lot more iron and magnesium by weight makes them denser, right? And so this is, you know, the extrusive version of this is, is basalt, right? Um, so looking at the two of these, this is a felsic rock, lots of light. I mean, I know there's a little bit of dark, right? But those pink colors, right, are, are light colors. Um, and those dark browns and blacks and greens, right, those gives us dark colors, right? So based on that, we come up with three major categories, right? We have mafic, right? The dark ferromagnesian over here, right? Intermediate, right? Halfway between mafic and felsic. And then we have felsic, right? So those light colored igneous rocks. And then really kind of the salt and pepper, the grays, those are our, our intermediate igneous rocks, right? So, right, source area always plays an important role too, right? So how do we get felsic la uh, magmas and lavas, right? Well, we're going to, you know, melt the continental crust, which is felsic itself, right? And that's going to produce a more felsic lava, right? If we're melting the mantle, however, like I'd say a divergent boundary or something, right, uh, where the mantle comes in, that's got a lot more iron and magnesium. It's a lot more mafic or ferromagnesia, right? So again, Felsic rocks. Here's a piece of granite. Take a look here, folks. Lots of pinks, right, in there. This is a, a good felsic rock. And felsic colors, again, are reds, pinks, whites, purple hues, clears, right? Purple hue is important with extrusive igneous rocks, right? So here's a rhyolite. This one looks very pink. Some rhyolites can have almost a purplish hue to them. Intermediate rocks, right? Salt and pepper, halfway between light and dark, salt and pepper, right? Or medium dark grays. Here's a diorite, 
This is the intrusive version. And here's an andesite. And as you can see, lots of little porphyries in there, all right, or little phenocris. This is a porphyritic andesite. Whenever something shows those two phases of texture, we just add the word porphyritic to the front, right? And then mafic, right? Mafic colors, brown, blacks, and greens, all right? And then add that there, but greens. There's our intrusive one, gabbro. And our extrusive one, basalt. Right? We also have ultramafic rocks. This one is almost pure olivine. It's called peridotite. But we won't worry about this in class, right? Here's an ultramafic lava, right? What we will worry about is this in class, right? So this is looking at both texture, right? Texture on the uh, y-axis, right? And then composition or color on the x-axis, right? And kind of looking at this, right? If we look and we see that we have, you know, lots of coarse grain, right? So it's phaneritic, right? And we can tell that it's got a lot of, you know, pinks and stuff like that in it, right? This is going to be, you know, uh, a, a felsic, right? Felsic down, right? And then phaneritic rock, that's granite, right? If we saw that it was kind of a, a gray color, right, and maybe had some porphyries in it or, you know, grayish brown kind of color, right? So we decided that that was a, uh, an intermediate rock, and we look at it, and it's all kind of very fine-grained. We call it an andesite, right? But if we saw those little crystals in there, then we would add that word porphyritic in front of it, right? So it would be a porphyritic andesite, porphyritic rhyolite, porphyritic basalt, right? So basalt, granite, felsic, and extrusive, or... You know, felsic and coarse, or I'm sorry, felsic and intrusive, what I mean to say, felsic and intrusive, or felsic and coarse grain, coarse grain being intrusive, right? And then uh, uh, that being one of the most important rocks on the planet, and basalt being mafic, right, and fine grained or extrusive, right? Uh, the real trick about this is to remember to correlate phaneritic or coarse grained with intrusive and aphanitic or fine grained with extrusive. All right, folks, see you next time.